SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is a remastered 3D platformer that pits SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy against an army of rogue robots created by Plankton. Through interactions with some of our favorite classic characters such as Gary, Mr. Krabs, Squidward, and Bubble Buddy, the trio must collect golden spatulas from various beloved locations across Bikini Bottom and beyond to end the threat once and for all. Are you ready kids? Let's get started. While the story isn't exactly that of an immersive blockbuster, it's light, fun, and very well could serve as the plot of an actual Spongebob episode. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and there are a handful of good laughs throughout the game. They're making a mess of Bikini Bottom! Sandy is right! I thought she was a squirrel. Most players will be able to tell pretty quickly that this is a gameplay-focused game, so I'm not going to spend too much time on the story. just as bad! This day just doesn't seem to be getting any better. After a brief tutorial, the game starts out in the familiar neighborhood and the player gets to start collecting items right away. Golden spatulas can be collected in a variety of ways, such as solving puzzles of varying difficulty, fighting through waves of robots, snowboarding on your tongue, cashing in collectibles that can be just as hard to obtain as some of the spatulas themselves, helping Larry with his tanning. Yeah, you get it. And the beauty of a game like this is that if there's a puzzle you find particularly annoying, cough cough kelp cave cough cough, you can probably just skip it and take your talents elsewhere. You need 75 spatulas in total to get to the final level, so the game allows you to play to your strengths and how they're obtained. The boss battles are disappointingly easy compared to some of the levels in the game. They all attack in certain patterns, so as long as you have a bit of patience, you shouldn't have many issues with them. That being said, that doesn't mean they aren't fun. Except the Dutchman fight, that one was a little bit too easy. The puzzles are a different story. Some are short and sweet, some require a few rounds of trial and error, and one in particular that I may or may not have mentioned earlier in this video isn't really a puzzle, but a frustrating traversal of a cave over and over again making a small amount of progress each time before you have to switch characters and go again. The combat outside of boss battles, much like the rest of the game, offers a few ways to attack the problem. Some ways of taking out bad guys are better than others depending on your environment, but since most of the scenarios robots have the ability to spawn clones after you take them out, you have to have a strategy before you jump in. Mm, kind of. You can stand back and launch remote control bubble rockets. Jump in and smack them around. You can throw stuff at them with Patrick, you can lasso them with Sandy, punch them off a ledge, whatever you like and whatever your environment allows you to do. Just be prepared for some repetitive lines from your character. Just my side. Just my side. Just my side. Anyways, as with any 3D platformer, traversal is the critical aspect of the game, and this one is no different. Each area of the map offers different ways of getting around, whether it be moving platforms, having to go from point A to point B within a set time limit, or jumping across falling platforms while those really annoying ranged robots throw things at you. Each of the playable characters have special moves that allow for them to get around in different ways. As Spongebob, you can pick up a sponge ball and roll around like a ball, or face plant up walls. With Patrick, you can throw ice cubes into lakes and turn the lakes into ice and you can run around until the timer runs out and then you die if you don't get back to a solid surface in time. Or you can throw stuff on a teeter-totter and launch yourself like a million feet. Sandy has the ability to Spider-Man on Texas ornaments, or glide around with her helicopter lasso. As long as you have a bit of patience and get the timing down of the obstacles, most shouldn't be very difficult. The movement itself is pretty fluid and somewhat easy to master, so the true focus can be on the timing of patterns, which in my book is the mark of a good platformer. I played this game on the Xbox One X console and had very few issues. Some users reported poor gameplay experience on the Switch, so I would definitely research your platform before making the purchase. There was a day one patch, so those issues may have been resolved. I only experienced one crash myself with the occasional drop in frames, but these days, that's actually pretty good. This is a remake that few asked for but came as a welcome surprise when it was announced. Having originally released 17 years ago, a whole new generation of gamers get to experience this cult classic as if it were new, and the older generation get to relive part of their childhood. The game is nearly identical gameplay-wise as it was back in the day, but has been greatly improved as far as graphics go. 
having realistic expectations, and by realistic I mean expecting exactly what the devs said this would be, is important when approaching this game as there isn't any new content that I noticed besides online multiplayer. Some reviewers gave this game like a 2 out of 10 or a 5 out of 10, but I disagree. The developers were very transparent from the beginning of what this game would be, and that is that it was going to be a remake, and that's what it is. I will point out that the fact that this is a remake won't affect my score. If you've played the original and don't really care for updated graphics, it may not be for you, but for $30, I consider this game well worth it. 8 out of 10.